you're on. Oh. Hey, I'm Eric of Stenbaka Media. We're gonna do a user review of the Sony A6300. I'm gonna be talking about it primarily um, from a video perspective, run it through its paces and compare it to some of the other Sony cameras, the FS5 and FS7. And I have to tell you how incredibly disappointed I am. You know, when I pop an L a light on it, it's just, it's, look at that. It's just kind of unbalanced. Let's talk a little bit about the LCD on the back. Um, it does tilt, so you've got um, options, but it's not removable. I mean, I can't take it off and put a loop on it, and so when I do shoulder-mounted shooting with this, it's gonna be, I don't, I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do. For tripod mounting, it's got one, a three-quarter 20 on it. I can't believe that. There's there's no 3816. I do not know how I'm going to mount rails on this and keep it <laughs> keep it from spinning. Sure, there's a microphone input here and you can adjust it and all that other kind of stuff. There's no XLRs. I don't know what they were thinking on a camera that they would produce that doesn't have dual XLRs. Just really disappointing that Sony left that off. I want to talk a little bit about the built-in microphone on this. Yeah, it has stereo mics, but there's no dead cat to go on them. And so you, you're always gonna get wind noise unless you put the entire camera inside of a dead cat. And then, and then you, it's hard to see the controls. Cost, did I mention that Sony wants like about $1,000 for this? I mean, it's, it's a decent camera, but $1,000 for a camera that shoots 4K and slow-mo and S-Log2 and S-Log3 and 24 megapixel stills, I'm not sure where they get off. I mean, you compare it to Canon's offerings with those same features. Okay, rolling shutter. People have been talking about the rolling shutter, and I have to say it's true. I mean, I've been doing some, some whip paint like that, and when I look at the video, it just looks kind of like crap. For a, for a camera that shoots S-Log in 4K slow-mo, the size is kind of ridiculous. It, it, it just is too big. You know, when you compare it to my phone, which by the way, can also shoot 4K video, um, it's just pretty big. You know, while we're talking about size of the camera and controls, I think the controls are altogether too small. They're just hard to, to work with normal size hands. I don't know I mean, who designed this. They just must have had tiny girl hands or something. Another thing I want to address is the record button here on the back. Yeah, it's hard to hit it accidentally and, and start recording, but that means basically I have to use some kind of tool to, to push, get record on it. It's really inconvenient. Biggest failure of this camera is the lens mount. They didn't make it Canon native. I just, I can't believe it. It's, I'm gonna have to buy some kind of adapter or something like that to put my Canon lenses on this Sony. Well, that's about it. Uh, we've compared it to the Sony FS7 and FS5 and the images are remarkably similar. I mean, that small thing aside, keep in mind those, uh, those negative points we talked about. And uh, if you go ahead and buy one, I warned you.